What's going on everybody? I wanted to cover a video about some stuff that was asked in, well it's been asked many times on many different platforms. <laughs> what should I do to get into IT? And uh, I find it kind of humorous because I didn't find getting into IT all that difficult. I, um, but it's not something, at least in my experience, that was something that you could do, like you could if, for example, you wanted to work as a general laborer or in a warehouse as a warehouse guy uh, or gal, depending on you know who's watching. So one of the things that I've seen people, and I've worked with people that are certified, I work with people that have certifications and a degree. I work with people that just have a degree. I work with people that don't have any credential behind them other than the fact that they, you know, got into the industry a long time ago and they're still here. And I can tell you from experience that all four variations were good at their own, good at their jobs. I very rarely have I ever worked with an engineer that didn't know what they were doing. And there are, uh, there are some people out there that, you know, talk to talk, but can't really walk to walk, but that's few and far between in my experience. So, uh, how did I get started in IT? Um, well, uh, funny story is I've been kind of exposed to it my entire life. Um, I started with a computer back when I was, was I seven? So that would have been 19... 89, 88, something like that. It was, I remember the very first, my dad was in the computers and I remember, um, in my kitchen on a, um, I forget what the term that they call it, not a China cabinet, but it was basically just, a um, this big piece of furniture that was in the kitchen that had a lot of stuff inside of it, or maybe it was a countertop. I don't remember. It's been a long time since I thought about this probably the better part of 30 years. Um, and my dad, or was it, a, was it a desk? I honestly don't remember, but it doesn't matter. Anyway, there was a computer in the, in the kitchen. It was centrally located and we would, um, my dad had, uh, it was, I remember this, it was a Commodore 64 and it had a text editor in it. And I was, was I fourth grade? Yeah, third grade. No, it was third grade. In third grade, um, I wrote a an essay about the Amazon rainforest, and it was a I wrote it on the computer, and uh, you had to have your submissions done by a certain date at a certain time, and so we we had a printer, and so we went and. Um, I told my parents about it. My dad thought it'd be, hey, use the computer to type it up. And I'm like, okay. So back then, the internet was not a thing. Um, so there was no Googling anything about the, the, the Amazon rainforest. So it took my mom driving me to the local library to look up books on the Amazon rainforest and how the Amazon rainforest had been, you know, uh, had been, um, what the, I forget the term, logged or whatever the logging industry done uh, was done so that they could get logs out of there to get the, the exotic woods and it had been, there had been rainforest or uh, forest fires and stuff like that. So I did, you know, the different type of animals that were in there. So it was a, uh, you had to have a, I think it was five paragraphs. But anyway, the point being is I had a Commodore 64 and that was a very, so I wrote that on there and I actually, my story, my essay, and along with two or three others, were the only three submissions from my school that got made it into the local newspaper. And the reason it made it in there is because it was typed. That's it. Everybody else hand wrote it because back then that was how you did everything. Everything was handwritten. So I went through that process. Um, and then as time went on, my dad ended up getting side jobs and working with computers and he was pretty much self-taught back then. There was really no, unless you, your dad, worked on it or you had you work for a university or um a, a large technical company or technology was something that you used you didn't use a computer it was i mean my, my mom's been a, a nurse 
And back then, everything was handwritten. There were, the charts were handwritten. There was nothing computerized. So that's how I got exposed. And what ended up happening was um, we, I'm trying to recall now, we, the computer moved, because we moved from, we, at the time, we lived in a side-by-side, kind of like a duplex, but it wasn't a duplex. Um, and I won't give you specifics as to where I lived and the street and all that type of stuff. That's none of your business. Um, but I went and we moved next door. And we had um, the computer set up in the living room at this point. And, you know, we did stuff on it. My dad, it was more just a play. You know, we had games and my dad did some computer stuff. And then we ended up moving to Florida. And we moved to Florida. There was always a computer in the house. And uh, I remember getting into middle school and high school. And in middle school and high school, there was computer labs set up in the classrooms. Because now we're in the early 90s mid 90s, late 90s. And I was a 90s kid, you know, I grew up in the 90s. Um, and that, that was my formidable years, I guess you could say, because, you know, before that it was the 80s and, you know, nothing was too young to remember a whole lot. But uh, we ended up working with computers and there's always a computer in the house and I was allowed to use it. My dad did some computer repair. So I, I had ripped apart and rebuilt my first computer by the time I was 10. And I knew both by looking at my dad would have, you know, pull out the flashlight and, you know, we'd have a computer on the dining room table and he'd be like, okay, what is this? What is that? What's this? How does this work? Back in IDE and Molex and a long time with ribbon cables. Um, back when you still had to have the jumper on the back of the hard drive so that the hard drive would know whether it's a master or a slave, all that type of stuff. So a long time ago. And um, I remember the very first operating system I worked on was Windows 3.1. And then uh, eventually we upgraded to Windows 95 and then, you know, continued to move up. I've always been a Windows guy. That's why that's what I work on. And so um, we we did that all the way through high school. I took computer. I was like one of the few people in my class that was computer savvy. I knew how to, you know, look at the, the defragment, a hard drive and all that type of stuff. I was pretty computer literate and stuff like that. But um, then I graduated from high school. And uh, throughout high school, I'd always taken programming classes, so I was wanted to be a web developer. And because I had a fascination with, you know, if you write HTML code, you can make the uh, web page come to life. You know, then you learn how to do the different hex codes to make the different colors show up and the different headings and add links and URLs and, you know, all that type of stuff. It was really fascinating to me. So I, I had some books from the library on... Uh, HTML, and so I would sit at my kitchen table and I would read through the HTML code that was written. This is, I think, on HTML three, if I'm not mistaken, or HTML two. It's been a long time; I don't really remember. But I learned how to program in HTML, and um, I did that for a long time, uh, pretty much all through high school. And uh, so I had built. Uh, I remember I had a website that I built on GeoCities which I believe was Yahoo back in the day. So you, I had a web page, and I would go in, and you can edit the HTML code. And so I would go and, the, you know, write code. I went to these um, the W3 schools, and I went to these all these different websites, and I would pull the, the syntax off of uh, these websites, and I would drop them into the, uh, the editor, and then I would, you know, run it and then you would see the marquee show up and I threw all kinds of stuff in there and it was cool because it gave me a lot of flexibility to to dive into it and uh, then I graduated from high school and um, I ended up moving away and moving actually to Milwaukee I went to the cold from living in the sun and the, and the warmth it was warm I love Orlando I'm, I, I commonly say that I'm a Wisconsin or Flo a Floridian living in Wisconsin, and I've been in Wisconsin for a long time, uh, way too long for my first, but I've got kids that are in school, and there's a reason why I don't uproot my family, but um, I went, and I'd always, like I said, I'd always been good with computers, and then eventually, um, you know, time goes on, you know, you, you're familiar with computers, you know how the motherboard works, and all the stuff that goes into it, and I had been, I was basically self-taught, I mean, there's no other way of putting it. 
and I, I knew a little bit about a little bit, but I definitely was not any type of rocket science. And um, I worked in warehousing for a long time. As a matter of fact, I went and I did uh, I drove a forklift for a number of warehouses in the area. I was actually pretty good at it, uh, come to find out, and I enjoyed it. It was driving a forklift around and having a lot of power, and I became very fast. And a lot of times when something needed to get done, I was the guy they would hunt down and be like, hey, Rob, we need you to load this trailer. And I learned early in my career, within the first year or two of getting a warehouse job, how to load a trailer and you know how to how to load it out because you can't see it on the inside of a what they call a box truck uh, where it's a 40 48 foot or 53 foot trailer that's covered um, that the the actual floor is not flat it's actually bowed in the middle so you put the heavier stuff in the middle and you put the lighter stuff towards the tail and the nose and uh, I learned very quickly that I didn't need to uh, do what they call load locks or anything like that where you put this like uh, you sometimes will see a steel bar on the back of a tractor trail or tra uh, semi tractor and It's got some teeth on it and what the idea is you extend that out to a certain point uh, it's, It should mount up against the walls of the trailer and then you you uh, ratchet it down Until it's tight. So what will end up happening is that the driver is driving the truck You put the load jack in front of the load. So as traffic is going if so the the, the driver has to slam on the brakes that you don't have the load shift into the front because there'd be nothing in front of it. I learned how to look at the load and then say, okay, if I have a short stack, I'm going to put a smaller stack on top of it so that I can just block it all in. I can use the load to protect itself. And I did that. I got pretty good at doing that. Um, and I loaded trailer, I loaded and unloaded trailers for a long time, probably the better part of seven or eight years. And uh, I did that for a long time and I was good at it. Um, you know, Pay wasn't great, you know. You doesn't matter how fast you can load or unload a trailer, you still get paid your twelve or fourteen or fifteen dollars an hour. It wasn't great pay, um, but I enjoyed it. It was steady work, and if I wanted to work overtime, I could work overtime. So I would work the 60, 70, 80 hours a week to make ends meet. And money back then was really tight. Um, I, you know, there's a there's a reason why I have an appreciation for what I have because I had to work really hard to get to where I'm at today and I remember back to the day when I used to have to get up at four o'clock in the morning to be on the road by 20 after four so basically get up take a shower get dressed and sometimes I mean it's winter time now and it's cold outside I think I think yesterday it was like 15 degrees out so now you have to get in your car drive to the drive to wherever you got to go and then you're there from 5 a.m. to 3, 4, 5 o'clock at night. And then you leave and you come home. So you spent 10, 12, 14 hours working and then you got to come home and still got to be a dad, take care of things around the house. You know, so you're exhausted. Um, it, it was a very physically demanding job. Um, you know, and it, uh, it definitely took its toll. I did that for a long time. And it wasn't until I decided, I forget who I was talking to, I ended up getting a job or um, getting approved for student or for financial aid, and my wife, ironically enough, did not want me to go back to school because she was she had her own personal reasons, and I won't get that into that here because that's water under the bridge many 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 years ago. Um, but she did not did not want me to go to college. Uh, not that she didn't want me to do better. Okay, to squash that thought process right now, it's um, but. She basically, she had her reasons, and I won't get into those. Uh, but if you are in a situation where your significant other or your partner or whoever it might be doesn't want you to go to school, you have to figure out why they don't want you to go to school. Why don't they want you to better yourself? Figure out what that, you know, that thing is. And, you know, I, I had fought her for a long time, and eventually I just didn't care anymore. It's like, you know what? You have your reasons, and if you don't like it, Tough beans. I'm gonna go. So I ended up going and uh, going back to school. And I didn't, I knew I wanted to be a network specialist. I really I I don't remember what it was that made me want to go networking, but I decided to go networking. And so I went networking, and I got uh, I was in a class. I had an intro to web concepts 
And then I forget what the other one was. Networking networking basics or something. I forget the name of the like two classes. But I had a, a class that the instructors were older ladies that knew their stuff. And so um, I remember the one class, it was my first class, it was intro to networking, or intro to web concepts, intro to IT and web concepts, something, something along those. It was, a, it, was a, it was a 101 course, basically. So what ended up happening was the instructor got up and she asked if any, or she wanted to get some advice. That's what it was. And she asked if, or she was like, um, if anybody has any questions and she went off like, how do you get experience and where do you go after you have your degree? Just some general questions, you know, I, I, I was like, okay, how do I, I was like, one of the things that I had a problem with is trying to prove to a employer I was marketable. You know, how do I prove I know what I'm doing? And that was the most common question. And so that's when she talked about certification. And so now I was certified at the time. I had a forklift certification. You had to be, at the time, I had to be certified to drive a forklift by the company that I worked for, as well as I had to take an OSHA certification stating that um, beyond just knowing how to operate the forklift based off the company's policies, um, depending on the industry that the company worked in, whether it was chemical, manufacturing, um, electrical, whatever, it didn't really matter, you had to pass a, a battery of OSHA tests, which meant, do you know how to read a placard? Do you know how to load, you know, what the maximum load is on this? Can Do you know what the, the variations are on that? Do you know what you have to do here? You know, are you shipping internationally? If you are, what, what steps do you have to take? So there's a lot of additional testing that, or learning that I had to do, and I knew all that type of stuff. I knew what I needed to do, and I didn't cut corners. I would do my job, um, and I was good at it. So I knew about compliance, and that was a big thing. ISO 9001 2000. Um, so she talked about certification, and I was like, okay. And so I, you know, she talked about CompTIA, she talked about Cisco, she talked about Microsoft, she talked about Linux, talked about Apple, uh, talked about the the wireless. Uh, standards that are out there and how certifications are kind of built around all of this. So I went home and I googled stuff. I was like, okay, well, I, um, CompTIA, what is oh, A plus, Net plus, Super plus? I was like, oh, okay. So it was almost like a stepping stone. You get, get one, then you work your way into the next, and you work your way into the next. So over the next, over a period of probably I want to say it was like two or three months. I went through CBT Nuggets had a CompTIA A plus course that I ended up going out and using. And uh, James Conrad was the instructor, and he talked about you know computers. And so I was like, okay, cool. So I started going through and learning about computers. All this at the same time, I was also taking a class at school on computers. And we went through and we took the class and I did fairly well. And now granted, I don't know, at the time I didn't know a lot. I'll be very honest. Uh, I was still pretty, um, pretty green in just about everything. And, but I ended up learning the A+, both the hardware and the software aspect of it. And I went and I sat for the A plus exam. And I went for the A plus exam on March, in March, March of 2012, I think. I don't remember exactly. Um, but I went for the exam and I ended up passing both exams on the first attempt. I was really surprised because right, I'd never passed this IT certification exam before. So I went in, I mean, I prepared. Um, so I went and then I, I called my wife and said that I had passed and that was kind of a turning point in my career because I was still working in the warehouse, still loading and loading trucks. Um, and I was doing all that type of stuff. And then I got to, I had my first IT certification. I had the A plus and now I'm okay. I'm marketable. Now I have a credential. So then I started to put my resume out online and 
before you knew. And that was one of those things where any IT job that I might, I thought I might be qualified for, I I applied to it. You know, if A plus was a, I said A plus jobs, CompTIA A plus jobs, and I landed a job pretty quickly. Um, it was uh, the the company that brought me on board. I don't remember the name of it. Um, I only was there for about a month. It was a short term contract, but it paid more than I was making. So I took the job and um, what I ended up doing was taking a, uh, this company was developing a warehouse automation system, if I remember correctly, uh, warehouse inventory system, that's, that's what it was. Um, they were doing that and they went and they had this location that they were building this out and they wanted somebody that understood warehousing. I understood warehousing, that was a perfect fit. Plus, I knew some IT stuff. So I ended up doing that. And before I knew it, um, the month had gone by and I had done a lot of work. Some networking, some systems, so on and so forth. And what ended up happening was I ended up leaving that job to go to another job. I had actually already interviewed for a position. Or I'm sorry, I had applied. And... I interviewed with this position and uh, apparently I did really well in the interview because they brought me in for a second round. And uh, in the interview, they asked questions on you know, a number of things and you know wanted to see how I would handle a situation and stuff like that. Before I knew, um, the interview was over. I mean, it, it, was, it was technical for what the position required it to be. Um, but I ended up leaving, and as I was driving home, the phone rang, and they offered me the position. So I was like, cool. So I got home. I ended up quitting the other job. Actually, time timing work, timing wise, it just happened to work out to where the very la the day that I got the job, the very next day was my last day. So I just got up and I walked out, and later guys, and they're like, have a nice weekend, and I just walked out, left all my stuff there, and stopped showing up. Um, Started a new job, basically help desk, you know, taking phone calls. I mean, it wasn't a call center, but we had this ticketing system, and my job was to go through and um, basically yeah, take tickets. So at first, I, I had no clue what to do. Like, okay, I'm used to fixing things that are broken or implementing stuff, but this wasn't really what they were looking for. They wanted somebody, well, that, that was, but you could get anything. It could be as simple as, you know, a, uh, a phone headset, a headset on a phone. There's no dial tone. I have a dial tone right now. You guys can't hear it, but I do have a dial tone. So I ended up taking, uh, doing a lot of voice, some wireless, some security, uh, working with uh, servers and PCs and building out PCs and building out images and all kinds of stuff. It was actually really good practice. I did that for a while. I was there about six months and then my wife was like, okay, we're not making any enough money anymore because my commute was a lot further. Uh, I was taking more gas. Um, I was, there was no overtime. Uh, so even though I was making a little bit more than I had been making in the warehouse, um, the overtime wasn't there anymore. There was no such thing as overtime in these jobs. Um, like I had been accustomed to like, cause I was like, can I work overtime? And they're like, <laughs> they laugh. Like, there is no overtime in it. I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, I ended up starting to interview for this other job. It was an entry network, entry level network operation center position, just a level one not guy. And I, inter I interviewed for it. It was a tough interview, lots of tough interviews. And I was, uh, having, I did the this the, the the phone interview, and I did the the in person interview. And these exams were or these interviews were difficult. Um, I had a hard time answering a lot of them, and uh, it really showed my weaknesses in uh, in networking. Now, mind you, during this entire time, I am I have my ICND one, I have CSENT under my belt, but I do not have CCNA yet. And so I'm still learning complete green, completely green behind the ear, what right behind the ears. Um, so 
I get this knock job by just I, I just I remember getting a phone call that I had the position. But they were actually hiring multiple people, so it was kind of a I, I had I wasn't expecting that. Usually I'd only be had been interviewing for uh, positions where there were um, what do you call it? Um, there was only one position available, and there was three people applying for it. I wasn't I never applied for a position where there were multiple positions open, and they were looking for multiple people. So it was kind of a shoe in. I did that. I got that job, and was immediately thrusted into networks. I felt like I jumped from the frying pan into the fire with networking, and it was probably the best thing that ever happened to me because now I'm seeing real networks, like not just something that is small, a little petite. This thing is no joke, like BGP, internet routing, MPLS, layer three connectivity, layer two switches, big boxes, like full on data centers. And I, I remember walking in through the data center, I was like, holy cow, this is freaking awesome. And it was the perfect opportunity because it gave me exposure to a lot of stuff. So I was literally, if I wasn't answering the phone to try to troubleshoot tickets, uh, now I wasn't a call center. And it was a much higher volume call center, that, or a higher volume than anything that I'd ever seen. So I'm, you know, I'm, uh, if I wasn't, um, if I wasn't taking a call, I was, I was reading and studying. And that's what they wanted me to do. Uh, there was really no backlog, if you will, of things to solve. They just wanted you to, how far are we in, 26 minutes, um, to, to learn. And that's exactly what I was doing. So... Shortly after I started working there, I got my CCNA, and right after that, I started studying for my CCNP, and I've been studying for my CCNP for a while. Um, it took me, I was able to get CCNP route and switch done while I worked there, because uh, I did a lot of layer three and a lot of layer two connectivity, and so it gave me a lot of exposure to a lot of stuff. I knew how to dive into uh, the technologies and really break, understood how they worked and stuff like that. That really helped. Uh, learning how ATM worked and learning how PPP worked. I worked a lot of those circuits for uh, about a year. And um, I ended up taking, I got, I passed route and switch while I worked there. And then I ended up leaving for a full time direct hire position because the position I was in currently was just a contract gig. There was no benefits. I had no pay time off, no vacation time, no insurance. Uh, it had just paid better than what I had been working in the help desk. And so I did that. And then um, I started, since I had my CCNA and I had, um, I ended up leaving that job for a full-time direct hire position with a small mom and pop shop doing, that they, were, they did nothing but development. Um, probably... A bad choice of of work move uh, because once I solved a couple of their networking problems, it was all systems, you know, my email, and I had absolutely no desire to be an email guy. Um, so I ended up taking that job, and then shortly thereafter, they let me go because I just wasn't, I didn't know enough about the system side of the house. So. Um, I took the time that I was off and at home to study for the T-shoot exam. And so I ended up uh, getting my CCNP shortly thereafter. Um, and then it was like within a week or two, I passed CCNA security. And um, I knocked that out. So I picked up my CCNP and routing and switching. And then I picked up my CCNA security. And I ended up taking a job... Um, with a bank, I think. Yeah, I took a job at the bank, and that was a lot of uh, deployment. So I did a lot of deployments in a very short period of time, multiple locations, uh, having to troubleshoot things left, right, and center, and uh, gave me a lot of experience. And so that's when I pretty much started my consulting. And I consulted, um, went to work for a Cisco partner, and then it was just a kind of snowball from there. And I was studying for my CCIE almost right away after I passed my CCNP, and I ended up landing into a study group uh, by pretty much just sure, just pure chance that it happened. Um, 
I was just scrolling through some website and I was like, oh, well, here's a study group. They're looking for people to join. I'm like, oh, sure, done. Uh, I joined. It was a, it was a lot of get to know you first, and uh, it was a little too much because I felt like I was way behind the bell curve compared to the rest of these folks, and um, but it was good at the same point in time, and so I ended up taking um, taking advantage of that, and then once I got a little further along, I passed the written exam and continued to consult. And uh, once I was all said and done in consulting, then it was take the CCA lab. And so I, um, I took the lab and started taking it in, in early 2015. And then finally in October of 2015, I passed. And then that, that was a big shift for me in terms of professional uh, stuff. Pretty much only Cisco partners um, or very large organizations is all I would work for. It's not that I'm, you know, saying I'm too good. To, it has nothing to do with that. It's just it's, it's where someone with my skill set usually goes is large organizations or Cisco partners. But that's basically how I got into IT. You know, I went back to school. Was uh, Some doors were opened up for me. Uh, I was given some clarity and some information, and I took around with it. And that really, really helped. And by doing so, I was able to go through and to learn everything that I needed to learn. Um, or I should say, learn enough in order to get some jobs done. But with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, comments, uh, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Until next time, guys, take it easy.